pH problems are sneaky. And today we are going to break down exactly how pH affects your grow and how to stop it from holding your plants back. But before we do, today's video is brought to you by Real Growers Recharge. If you want stronger, healthier plants, if you want bigger roots for better fruits, you got to check out Real Growers Recharge. It's like an instant compost tea that holds more nutrients at your root zone, breaks those nutrients down, and makes them more plant available, getting more of your nutrients into your plants. Find out more about Recharge over at realgrowers.com. And while you're there, use coupon code SCOTTY420 to get 20% off your first order. Now let's get back to the show. Come on, high C, let's get into it. Okay, so I've got a friend who always tells me I don't need to worry about pH. Do I ever say, I don't need to understand pH, <laughs> right? Well, that, yeah, you were that friend. <laughs> yeah. No, I've, I've got uh, ways where you know, it's not so reactive, where you don't have to worry about it. We'll get into that. But what what is pH? And it is important to understand. Absolutely. It's potential of hydrogen. It's just hydrogen. Uh, more hydrogen ions are going to lower the pH. Uh, less hydrogen is going to raise the pH. And there's just cannabis has a certain range where it can absorb nutrients. It likes it slightly acidic. So I think neutral, I know neutral is seven. So anywhere in the sixes. Is the high fives cannabis can absorb different nutrients get absorbed at different pH levels. If you draw a line it through all of them, right at about six ish, six five, you're gonna hit a lot of the peaks. So uh, that's a real good average, you know, to, uh, pH to to strive for. So you want your soil, your media, your plants environment to be at about six point five pH. Yep. You can measure this. You can look and see what your pH is. Yeah. Uh, um. <clears throat> yeah. You can measure the pH of your water very easily. General Hydroponics has a $10 little test kit. It looks like the if you ever had a swimming pool, you just drop a little bit of droplets in there. You shake it up, and you see what color it is. You compare it to a color chart, and, yeah, that'll give you a basic understanding of the pH of the water that you're watering in. But that doesn't always translate into what the pH of the plant's environment is, right? Not even close, man. Um, uh, the pH that you're measuring is the water going in, right? So it's going to react with whatever's the soil and whatever's in the soil, mm. and that's going to change your pH. Right, because nutrients will affect pH as well. Absolutely. When nutrients get uptaken, they can give hydrogen back. And what were we talking about? Hydrogen, the potential of hydrogen, the potential of hydrogen to screw up your pH. Yeah, so the real value is knowing the pH at your root zone. In oh, where the exchange is happening. Real, yeah, at the rhizosphere, at that little, what do they call it, the 120th of an inch where the exchange is actually happening. Uh, and that's where we get in the soil microbes and things like that. Think, Bef before we do, sure. how do you measure the pH at your root zone? How do you know what that is? You know... I do a runoff test. There's there's different tests for if you want to uh, measure the pH in your media. There's something called a slurry test where you can take a little bit of your cocoa, shake it up a little bit, let it settle, and then test the pH of that. Uh, there are pH probes that I find incredibly inaccurate. Yeah. So I don't like, there's literally like an $8 pH probe you can buy. I don't like those. Um, so the best way that I can do it is to just, Measure, take pH neutral water, okay? Just uh, make sure that this, you know, use my up and down and make sure this is neutral right at seven and then pour a bunch of that into the plant and it's going to wash out whatever, you know, what, whatever water's in there and that's how you can really get a good understanding of the pH at your root zone or at least in your media. So start with neutral water. Yep. Pour it through and then measure what comes through and then you can see where your pH at your root zone is. Perfect. Okay, you mentioned pH up and pH down. Are those like products that you can Yeah, buy? they're very generic. It's acids and bases. A lot of times the grow stores will make it themselves. It's literally phosphoric acid and something uh, alkaline. They call them bases. It means they're alkaline. It'll raise your pH. Um, and there's a few things that they use. So, But it's up and down is what it is. So if my water is too acidic, I'll add some alkaline. If my water is too base, I'll add a little bit of 
acidic pH down and it adjusts my water to where I need it to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And by the way, you need something. If you try to do this with reverse osmosis water, mm. there is nothing in there to buffer. It'll go spike and then it'll go down. So, man, you need a little something in your water. Just 35, 50 parts per million. But, yeah, it's a little tip for using pH up and down. All right, so I understand the importance of having my pH. I want my pH at my root zone to be about 6.5 so the sure. plant can uptake all of the nutrients that it needs. Sure. We started off the show by talking about how my friend Scotty Real always says, don't worry about pH. Sure. And you mentioned microbes, soil microbes? Absolutely. All right, so I came from hydroponics. So I, have, uh, I used to do deep water culture, no media whatsoever. So there is no buffer between uh, the roots and the, the nutrient. So I have to make sure that those nutrients are perfectly dialed in. That means the perfect pH. That's when pH is super important. When I'm using soil microbes, now in the rhizosphere, at the rhizosphere, at that point where the root meets the soil, there is a huge population, a living population there, and they want to stay alive. They can only stay alive at a decent pH range, and they have to keep the plant alive because the plant can only stay alive at a specific pH range. So microbes are able to regulate their pH. Uh, if it's too high, they can make acids. Uh, if it's too low, they can make carbonates, and they're able to regulate their pH that way. Don't forget, they want to keep the plant alive. They need to. So soil microbes, they can somehow tell what the pH is, and then they can adjust the sure. pH at the root zone? Sure, absolutely. I could tell if something was too acidic, right? I, yeah, but you've got a brain. I don't know. I, that seems a little bit like magic to me. Nah, I mean, it's survival is what it is. So now that we know that microbes can raise and lower the pH, well, it can do that to help the plant absorb nutrients. Uh, when you're talking super high pH, something like iron, that's a micronutrient. Well, iron can bind with, ox it can bind with oxygen uh, at a really high pH, makes rust, it makes iron oxide. If you have it at that right pH, it becomes soluble in water and becomes uptaken by the plant. So it's really important for uh, the microbes to change the pH or regulate the pH right at that absorption point. That's the big deal that microbes do. Who cares what's going on as you're mixing the water in your, you know, in your watering can? Who cares what's going on uh, you know, two inches away from the roots? We care what's going on in the rhizosphere. That rhizosphere is where the roots meet the soil. So this is where me not worrying or micromanaging my pH comes into play. I let the microbes micromanage my pH right in that rhizosphere. Shameless plug. Sure. Real Growers Recharge is filled with those soil microbes to Absolutely. make it easy. And that's when I stopped telling you to go buy. I used to have a pH doser. I used to have a pH up and down, like a doser that had uh, in every reservoir would have a little meter in it, and then it would go up and down, and it would just dose. So I had exactly 6.3 or 6.5, whatever I wanted. That was a pain in the ass, man. It is so much nicer to pour soil microbes on. And by the way, recharge, earthworm castings, compost. There's all sorts of places you can get microbes. And by the way, you ever seen an organic gardener with a pH pen or testing their runoff? No, they also don't really worry about pH that Yes, much. it's because they let the microbes do the pHing for them. Symbiosis. The microbes have a symbiosis with the plant. They can't make those sugars themselves. They're stuck underground. The plant can do it through its leaves. So it wants to keep that plant alive. So the sugar factory keeps going. Hey, but that is just me. I think understanding pH is really important. Like I said, I don't have to worry about it so much because I use soil microbes. But come on, what about you? How do you keep your pH in range? Let me know in the comments. If you dug this video, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Come on, share this one with another grower you know. And check out the other couple of videos YouTube's recommending. We think you'll dig them.